Well, hello, everybody. How are we doing today? We are going to be going over a bunch of stuff. Let's get some music going here in the background. Um, I am pretty excited. I love uh, the Druid and the the Ranger. I think they are... They may be my favorite versions of Druid and Ranger to, to come, honestly, to any tabletop RPG. I feel like the Ranger really hits the nail on this one. So we have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's get some artwork on in the background here. I just realized I'm really close. I'm sitting very close to the camera today. Let me pull up my cam feed. Uh, what do we want to do? You want a frog? We'll put a frog on in the background. Someone said frog something or other. So I'm going to put a cute little frog spinning in a circle on a storm club. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to make anything today. I think we're going to be looking over it uh, because I have that nine hour stream on Friday. I, I don't know. We'll see how long I'm on. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. So let me zoom this out. Woo! Um, and then let me tilt it up a little bit because I'm a little cut off. And I obviously want you to be able to see this. Oh, my dog just came up. Hi, Fiona. Uh, so we have a lot to go over. What's up, Gunsmith? Hi, Allie. What's up, Frog? Hi, Myth. How are you doing? Pretty good. It's it's um it's a busy day in the neighborhood. It's a busy day. Busy, busy, busy. Gen Con around the corner. This is like my busiest time of the year as a contractor. I am I am doing stuff for every everyone under the sun right now is what it feels like. Like legitimately. So let's go over to the news board. Let's get this thing rolling. We have a lot to go over. Whoop. So let's see here. What do I got for show notes? Uh, our news. Oh, okay. Uh, let's start with our news. Whoosh. By the way, if you didn't get the announcement, if you didn't get it, we have a new Kickstarter coming out uh, here very shortly. It's going to be Castles and Crowns. If you were here back in March when we talked over our city book, this is in the same series, but for Castles and Crowns. I love the city book. I use it quite frequently. I've used it for two adventures now, and I've used it for a campaign piece as well that I've been running. We just finished it on Monday and Tuesday. I use some of the stuff in there from the random tables. So if you are interested in more uh, building goodness, if you want to go from peasant to prince, this is going to be the book for you. If you haven't seen the other one, it even comes with a really good map folio. Uh, so if you're looking for like nice dry erase style, big fold-out maps, when I showed these off, I had to stand at the back of the office to be able to even show them to you. Yes, the city's book, yeah. So the castle's one, castle and crown, is all about building your kingdom. Uh, peasant, the prince or princess, that's kind of the, the concept behind it. We'll have more information about it at Gen Con and as this month rolls out. So that's the first thing going on. Wanted to make sure I dropped information on that. Let's talk about the blog. If you all have not been watching the blog lately, uh, Jeff and the team over there crush this blog every week. First off, this is a full subclass for the Sorcerer for Diablo. Yeah. And then Valiant Fridays, Return of an Old Friend. If you didn't see, um, we made what I believe to be the best decision in Switch of the Year for us. We are dropping the core fantasy role-playing name for the open uh, license for you all to use, and it's now Black Flag Role-Playing. Everybody wanted it. They wanted a version of it. And instead of us taking it away, we're giving everybody what they asked for. We are giving you Black Flag Role-Playing. It's that... We raised a flag as a team, we got it done, and now because of that, we're, we're keeping the name. I I love that we kept this uh, as a designer. I think this is one of the best things we could have done. Uh, but there's a whole release on this. If you missed it, you can check out everything that's in here for it. I'll even drop a link in chat for you, but it's on our blog. If you didn't see it, here you are. I think it's great. Um, we also talk about the Caverns of the Spore Lord Adventure. It's a Tales of Valiant backers. Uh, you already unlock some incredible add-ons that have been slowly rolling out as we are getting everything else ready for the big book. Spore Lord is out. It is a doozy. It is a doozy. I don't know, Wilson. I would love stickers, patches, and banners. I would assume Mark and the team are going to put some stuff out. I mean, it would be silly if we didn't do it. I, I, I submitted... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted this. So I wanted a pin with a flag on it that you could slide up. And if you flipped it, it locked in spot. So it was a raise the flag. So if you were at like a convention stuff, you could slide the pin up and flip the flag over. 
and it would stay, you know, in place and lock in place. And then when it was down, was in the flags down when you like weren't role playing or not in character. Kind of like it harkens back a little bit to LARP, where you would have an action to say when you were in character or when you weren't. I thought it'd be a really cool in in character pin for the table. Maybe that's just me. I thought it would be kind of spicy. I liked it, but anyway, I'm sure we'll see stuff as we go on. And then obviously TOV at Gen Con, you may have noticed that the Twitch page has got a little bit of a remodel. Uh, down below, there's the links for everything. Our social links are there now. I'll update the Castles of Crusade one right after the show today. Uh, and then you'll also notice that the banner's different and everything's there. The booth number's there. It's really hard, by the way, to make Twitch uh, banners fit all of your information with their scaling. Because it, it doesn't give you a layer to scale your text info. It's so weird. It's so weird. So... If you've missed this, please check this out. That's a really good one. Return of the Old Friend. Um, just amazing in general. And then, of course, the Barbarian subclass. This subclass is fire. This is really, really good. If you've been playing Diablo and you want something that isn't as annoying as patch one, maybe just play the Barbarian at your table because it's probably going to be better. I'm sorry. I had to throw a little shade. Everyone's very upset about the patch one for those who are doing it. What does it say? I have a little dragon flag where you can raise the black flag over it. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah, we could. We could. Anyone notice the cover for the monster book for TOV? The red dragon that it's breathing fire on a, on a character? Um... I'm just saying. So anyway, that's that. And then, of course, July is the last chance for you all to get a hold of the 20% off select monster titles. If you haven't seen this, this is also really cool. Um, I think I have that. Is it in the news section? Uh, no, nope, that's a pack of four. Hmm. I don't know if I have a sales one right now. I will, I will clip this and put this in here for you as well. Um, this is 20% off select monster titles. I'm a big fan of Creature Codex, and I've said this numerous times, but in case this is your first time here, if you didn't know, technically speaking, Creature Codex falls right in between Tome of Beast 1 and 2. So you'll notice it's 20% off a lot of them. Even some foundry pieces are in here as well. Uh, the layers are great if you're looking for quick layers for monsters. Those are great pickups as well. These are your print and even your PDF stuff. So if you're looking for a little extra stuff to pick up, it ends this month. Our monstrous sale ends at the end of July. Get it while you can. So that's the that's all I got for news. Um, Gen Con, obviously around the corner, our booth. We're going to be there. I'll be at the booth a few times. Uh, primarily, I will be running around, running games, running panels, talking to people, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, I, think, I think that's everything that I can legally say right now. Legally. That's all I can legally say. Uh, does anyone else? Uh, um, is anyone else like any of the Creature Codex? Has anyone else looked at it? I love the Creature Codex. I think it's fantastic. I see somebody else at Creature Codex. Tome of Beast. Yep, I love Tome of Beast. The the revised uh, 2023 version just came out, which is a little look into the stat blocks for for Tales of the Valiant and Black Flag role playing, which is super cool. Uh, and then, of course, in case you, you don't know, uh, there's obviously, you know, the Tales of the Valiant website as well. If you're looking for some TOV love. And then if you've not picked up the Alpha yet, and this is probably my last thing before we dive into today's show. Um, don't forget, if you missed the backer, like backing the Kickstarter, you can now back. You can go to the Tales of the Valiant. You can still do a late pledge. But you can pick up the alpha if you're looking to pick it up. And if you don't want to pick it up yet, you're not sure, you can still get the preview, look through the preview, and then you can always pick up the alpha for $9.99. It is a thick book. It's a thick PDF. It's like 170 pages. You can play levels one through five for four of the classes out of the gate. It's, it's pretty awesome. And with everything else, you can really start playing before the full Tales of the Valiant experience drops. So that's the, that's the long and short of that. Um... Oh, we, we ordered my son a Creature Codex and a Tomo Beast for his birthday. Oh, wow. that's road. That is a great uh, birthday. Why don't I get that stuff for my birthday? Friends, why don't I get tabletop books for my birthday? <laughs> so many different forms of drakes in the books. Yes, I agree. The Horde Drake is one of my favorites. If you've not looked at the Horde Drake, that is 
an amazing monster to use for hordes. Such a great thing. Such a great thing. So uh, let's uh, let's let's look at the rest of the stuff that we got to talk about here. Uh, and topic time here. Uh, what else we got in show notes? So we got our news. TOV Alpha. We already talked about that. Druid Ranger. How many people have looked through the Druid Ranger yet? How many of you have actually seen the Tales of the Valiant Druid Ranger? Any of you? Have any of you seen it yet? I'm going to blow this up a little bit just to make it a little easier for everyone to read. Let me blow this up. Whoop. Hey, how many of you have actually looked through this? Because it's... It's a... It's a... It's hefty. It's 10 levels. It's 10 levels of goodness. Let me switch some Acrobat stuff here. So we can scroll through this beauty. I have and I love what I see. Okay, okay. That's what we want to hear. I'm sure the den will be happy to hear that. What is that messed up? Hold on, I'm leaning in to look at something. You gotta love when they make everything small sized in OBS. There we go. Um, I love the Ranger. I think, yes. So... So for those who don't know, we put one through five out in the alpha, right? And we knew that we needed to make these two classes shine because I, I mean, personally, I feel like they were given a disservice in many editions of role playing because you, you know, Legolas and, and all those archer styles. And then of course you have Rangers from, you know, Drist that we've been following for so many years. Everybody has their own perception on a Ranger and everyone has their own perception on a Druid. Like it's the thing that like everybody wants something out of them, but nobody wants the same thing. Everybody wants them to do something else. They're kind of like a catch all class in my eyes. And I feel like we caught it all. We, we, we caught everything. We caught it all. The team, they did it. They found a way to catch the Pokemons. Um, and it's not an easy feat. Let's slide this over a touch. So I'm not going to go through every piece of this, right? But I do want to talk about things that can be done with it. Uh, the deadline is already up, so we are looking at this after the backers have had a chance to get it, to look through it. Uh, this is not something that is available. It's just a backer playtest. There's more backer playtests coming out for people who backed. Unfortunately, no, late pledges don't get the backer playtest. Uh, but they are things that are, for those who joined us, the 10,000 plus people who helped back to Kickstarter have gotten some of these. But I will do a little look through. I'm sure you'll find other people doing look throughs as well. So we all know how to use a packet by now, right? I don't need to read this. We good? We all know. We all understand this part. Is this... <laughs> Do we all understand how to use a packet? Why is this Why is this highlighting like that? Don't be like that. Like, don't be like that. I'm trying to highlight and it's just mad at me. There we go. We all know how to use it. It did. It was a two. It was a two weeker. It was a really quick one, and it was really quick because we didn't want it to overlap with Alpha, because Alpha's two months. Like we could not have it overlap because the data points had been a pain of the a pain of the butt for such a small team. So we have two classes. Yeah, yeah, it does. We have two classes. We have the Druid and the Ranger. Druids are guardians of nature with weird primordial magic, and rangers are resourceful survivalists with a mystic connection to nature. D8 and D10 for your hit die, wisdom decks for your key abilities, and then your save proficiencies, say, are int and wisdom for a druid, which I love, and strength and decks, which we all know the ranger needs to be able to be ranged in melee. Both get light and medium armor and shields. A druid gets natural weapon properties. They have to have natural materials and simple weapons. And then uh, the ranger gets simple weapons and martial weapons. So there's a lot of behind the curtain stuff in this one. And I think this is probably the part I want to highlight the most. Obviously, D8, con, you get your same thing at higher levels. I think this, though, I like the primordial magic category as well. Um, 
I think this piece here is probably the biggest part in here. These behind the curtains let you know kind of thought process behind the design team. The section covers the changes made to the Druid base class as it appears in 5e and clarifications around the choices that were made. Uh, as always, playtest material is subject to change, so let us know your opinions and playtest feedback and all that fun stuff. So Druids now know three cantrips at first level, and the rest of their cantrips known progression now matches the other full caster classes, Cleric and Wizard, because they are a primordial caster for, for TOV, and I, I love that. They should be, right? Druids gain a new feature at first level, Nature's Gift. Uh, it's a high utility healing tool that doesn't conflict with wild shape. I like this as well. Wild shape now uh, scales the same way as a cleric's channel divinity does, because we changed cleric's channeling really, really pretty heavily. And I like the new version a lot, especially in practice after seeing it on stream. It works really well. So this helps balance the feature uh, earlier levels it means the druid now eventually gets three uses where they were limited to two and 5e so really balancing that kind of healing ability or wild chip ability druid subclass uh, is now chosen at third level instead of second which again across the board all of our classes are a third level choice um i i believe that's great because i know a lot of my campaigns i don't know about all of you out there i start a lot of my campaigns at third level like do you guys do you guys skip after you've known a game and you've played it a few times, do you skip levels one and two a lot? Do you usually dive right into that third level for second level casting of abilities, for cooler mechanics? Like, do you see yourself just starting at third level a lot now? I think that to me, that baseline of archetypes chosen at third was a great feature. You're a little more survivable, you have more hit points, you're not dying because you looked at a flea that jumped on you and bit you and you lost your hit point. <laughs> Second, third level, yeah, same here. So we did that. Druid subclass is now third level. Uh, the next subclass feature is unlocked at seventh level. Instead of third level, these changes accomplish several goals. Again, the standard, standardizing class progression we've talked about in the other classes. Uh, better spreads Druid class features, so players have more time to master the Druid abilities before introducing more complex uh, complexity at higher levels. Same for all of our other classes. Makes third levels more exciting. Previously, third level granted zero class features. It was just a dead level. Nobody likes dead levels in a game. If this is a level-based game, no one wants a blank level. Everybody wants something. Subclass features are now unlocked at third, and then at seventh level instead of second and sixth. This change supports the goals outlined above. Wild, chase, wild shape beast form improvements now happen at fifth and ninth instead of fourth and eighth. This helps better spread around the class features, making everything more exciting. Pretty cool. I do like that as well. No one likes dead levels. Yeah, exactly. It's like I leveled. Could we just done? Could we have just done two levels? Like that's what you feel every time. And then heroic boon is a brand new feature achieved at tenth level. Each base class will have their own version of this feature. We hope these heroic boons uh, better reward players who choose to invest ten levels in a single class this isn't to say that multi-classing would be bad it's just that like uh yo you achieved 10th level congratulations we have our spell progression here rituals for druids this here i love rituals for in between times i think it's great i think this is great a break a, a breakdown obviously your base attack bonus your proficiency bonus um features we have all a feature here druid circle that is your choosing improvement improved beast form wild shape set uh, twice per rest circle feature improvement form mastery heroic boom and this is the first time we've seen six through tenth for any of the tales of the valiant stuff so all the normal things you expect kind of from here herbalism kit all that kind of stuff you get to choose your two skills your your starting equipment your spell casting your cantrips we know you get three now instead how you prepare your spells um, ritual casting is awesome. We turned it up to 10 for this packet just to give a sample of what higher level play will look like. I love this. Um, I thought about running a duo game with a druid and a, a ranger on stream just to do a live play to see kind of like what a 10th level game would feel like. Something I may do still. We'll see. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what the kobolds bring. Ritual casting. Spell casting focus. I know, Wilson, I want to, I do, it, 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 we will see what Gen Con brings. Uh, Nature's Gift, 
This is pretty cool. So this is what they're talking about with the new ability that you get. You have learned to harness the ambient energy of nature and can redirect the energy to encourage growth and healing. As a bonus action, choose one creature within five foot of you. This includes you. Uh, when you do so, roll a number of d4s equal to your proficiency bonus. I still love that the proficiency bonus is now kind of like the measuring stick for how many times things are done. I think that's genius. It's built into every class. There's no reason not to do it. It's easy to remember. It's on your sheet. Smart choice. Just across the board, smart smart design choice. So when you do this, you heal 2d4. The creature regains hit points equal to the total rolled. This feature has no effect on undead or construct creatures. You can use this feature a number of times a day equal to your proficiency bonus. You recover expended uses when you complete a long rest. So a little player's wisdom. Nature's gift is not a spell, which means a druid can use it even while transformed in wild shape. So you can be whatever it is you are in your beast form and touch somebody and still heal them or nuzzle them as a dog and give them the 2d4. Or if you're a bird, you can land on their shoulder and chirp in their ear. If you're an insect, you know, whatever, you could spin a web in front of them and they walk through it and it, and it heals them. Whatever it is that you do with your druid, you can come up with some creative ways to heal people while you're still in your animal form. A, a druid therapy dog road. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I drew he's got his harness on he's carrying all of your snacks he's got his thunder vest on for when you cast your spells so he's not afraid he nuzzles you and heals you for 2d4 with your proficiency bonus or a bear hug or a bear hug i think that this this here is a really cool thing um we just ran a game where someone shape shifts uh we finished our season finale for our dragon lance games last night and we had a spell, actually she's in chat, Allie's in chat. When she shifts into a raven, she has the ability to speak, but she can't really cast spells in it. It's just an odd thing where wizards and druids and polymorph creatures it, it can't cast things. Unless it's like just a verbal component. This is a nice little like nod to like, a, you know, we still love you, even when you're in animal form. And then wild shape. Am I the only one who read this and went, finally? Finally, Druid uh, Wild Shape is is done right. Like, did anyone else feel that way when they read this? Because we all read the recent one that came out for 5e, and, and it definitely was not something that most people were happy with. Um, I, and I think our group took that to heart when they built this, but it's such a good... It's such a, it's such a good build. So... This is the most important, I think, ability that people want as a druid. You gain the ability to channel primordial energy directly from nature, using that energy to fuel magical effects. Uh, when you start with one such effect, beast form, some druid circles gain additional effects as you advance in levels, which I'm looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. You choose which effect to create. While wild shape effects require saves, when you use such an effect, the DC equal to your druid spell save, Eight, plus your proficiency bonus, plus your wisdom modifier. At sixth level, you can use wild shape twice before the rest. And then at 17, three times. So you get that three times. So here's our here's our wild shape beast form. Agreed, Road. As an action, you can magically assume the shape of a beast you have seen before. Your druid level determines the beast you can transform into as shown in the beast forms table. Now, this is pretty cool. For example, at second level, you can transform to any beast that has a challenge rating, CR, of quarter or lower, that doesn't have a fly or a swim speed. Right? Circle the moon. Agreed. And you can see here the little table we put up from second to ninth. Quarter, half, one. Right? These are the creatures you can turn into. And then at ninth, there's no limitations. Which is pretty cool. So that means at ninth, you can, you know, you can turn into a giant eagle, for example. Fifth level, you can turn into a crocodile. So this is pretty nice. You can stay in beast form for a number of hours equal to your proficiency bonus, so you can travel that way for a while, right? You then revert to your normal form unless you expend another use of wild shape, so you can extend the time frame. You can also choose to revert to your normal phone form as a bonus action. You automatically revert if you become unconscious, drop to zero hit points while in beast form, or die. Uh, which is awesome. It's that lycanthropy feel, too. When you fall and the person turns into the human form, you get an idea who it is. It's that good reveal. Uh, you can't stay in that form and just be a, a dead wolf on the side of the road. Like, it, 
it works. You know what I mean? So use the beast statistics of your new form in place of your normal character statistics. So this stuff gets replaced with a few exceptions. You retain your personality, it, wisdom. So mental scores stay, physical scores change. You take an ability to ch uh, ability check or save on beast form. You can choose whether to use your normal character proficiencies, MPB, or use your beast listed ability modified to determine the check. So if they're really good at athletics and you're not, and so on. Can't use any legendary layer actions the form might have. That's that's not a thing. Although I could see items for that. It could be really cool. Like hunting down and stopping an evil version of that monster and taking an item they have and crafting it into a legendary item, which gives you the legendary layer action, would be awesome for your grove. That's just me as a GM wanting to make things for players. You know what I mean? So when you transform, your hit points are set to the beast maximum HP. So it allows you to raise those hit points. When you revert to your normal form, you return to the number of HP you had before transform. So you're really going to have to write down your hit point before and after, which I think is very important. That's what I think. Um, I think that's an awesome way to, to do that. Uh, however, you drop the zero HP in beast form, you automatically revert to a normal form, um, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty awesome. You, you get to keep everything, you switch back to what you need to be, your hit points go back to where they were. So if you go to a lower hit points and you revert back, you go back to your character's hit points. Pretty cool. Can't cast spells, however, transforming doesn't automatically break your concentration on spells. So if you cast before you go into it and then you're in beast form for your hours equal to proficiency bonus, you get to keep it. Pretty cool. Concentration spells stay. Love it. I think that's great. Without it, I think you'd be in kind of a crummy situation, to be 100% honest with you. Um, your ability to speak, use your hands, and otherwise interact with objects is limited to the capabilities of your beast form. Monkey can obviously do more. A crow can talk somewhat. And then you retrain the benefits of any features granted by your class, lineage, heritage, or other source can use them if your beast form is physically capable of doing so. Armadillo, right. But also like, so here's the thing that's cool. This is, this is me, you know, building out loud. If you say, let's say we build a beast kin frog, right? Let's just say that's what we do. And you have the grove heritage. That means you have a climb speed. So now you're an armadillo with climb. If it's capable of doing that. But if you turn into something that would have climb, but you don't get granted that ability, but your heritage does, you'd have your climb speed still. So it lets you still kind of keep that fun thing. Like if it's something that could climb, like if you turn into a squirrel, you now have a climb speed because you had it from Grove, which I think is a really cool trait for things. Personally, I think that's a great touch for this. Um, anyway, so when you transform, uh, choose whether your equipment falls to the ground in your space or merges in your new form. Now you have a choice. Now you have a choice. So like if you want this stuff to drop to your feet because maybe you want to leave the gear for somebody else, like your backpack, you choose. You don't gain any benefit from wearing non-magical or magical equipment in your beast form unless the item specifies, same as it's always been. So really great remodel of Wild Shape. I, I love it. Obviously you get some your subclass, your improvements, you know, your stat or your magic talent for this version. Talents are awesome. I love that they're making you take our version of kind of feats. Instead of saying they're optional, I think it adds a flavor that was missing from 5e, per personally. And I like a lot of our talents. They're very polished in what they do. And they feel like they give you things that are creative. And a lot of them are out of combat. I love seeing out of combat stuff. Because combat, while it is a part of the game, it's not all of the game. So I love seeing options that are out of combat options. I think they're fun. Um, it's a role-playing game. Both ROL and ROLE. So, master your form at ninth, you get another bonus, and then we get this new thing. This is that new, this new 10th level feature, everybody. And I'm assuming we're going to see more of these as we move on into everything, but right now, this is our heroic boon. Have any of you guys, um, has anyone out here built a 10th level character as a test before we dive into heroic boon? Has anyone here decided they really wanted to build a character and built a 10th level yet? It just says that you drop your equipment. It just says 
Your equipment falls to the ground in your space emer or emerges into your form. That's all it says. Not yet. So heroic boon to me. The, I always felt that when you hit those milestones, those capstones in a class, that I want something that makes me feel like why I'm in this class matters. And why I'm in this class is defined by some big pieces. You know what I'm saying? You're not a playtester? Hey, listen, that's what we're here for. Um, and I think this 10th level ability is exactly what was missing from 5e in general. And this is just my personal non cobalt press, but just me as a GM and a player, I think this is the kind of stuff that's missing, which makes me really excited to see what the bard's gonna have. What do you give like a warlock at 10th level? Um, and we've been playing video games also for so long that we get those capstone pieces in our RPGs we play in video games, and I feel like they've been missing from tabletop in a lot of games. So, this is the heroic boon. Your commitment to the druid's path grants you a powerful new ability. Choose one of the following heroic boons. And this is just a playtest. There may be more. I, I don't know. Right of the Shaper. When you roll initiative and have no remaining uses of Wild Shape, you regain one use. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you complete a long rest. So that means that... If you're tired and exhausted, you draw up that extra energy and you can shapeshift one more time for combat if it's needed. Turning into your bear form or wherever it may be. Let you double down and have that extra chance to get it done. Right of the Kingdom. This is your this is your Disney Prince or Princess, right? Why is it gonna be abused? Well, first off, in games, I don't think. I don't think that there's such thing, this is my belief, there's such thing as abusive stuff because we're all playing a game together and story. Like if everyone loves to plumb a system or min-max a character, I just think min-max sounds kind of negative, but everyone likes to make their character the best they can be, the Batmans of the world. <laughs> and since it's that way, I love when they get these abilities. One shapeshift for combat's great. And you're only and you're only rolling initiative when your GM tells you to. So if you're just gonna go pick a fight to roll initiative, I don't think that's gonna go very well for you if you're just trying to get another wild shape out of it. <laughs> you're probably gonna get rocked for being that player at the table. <laughs> but I don't know if it'll be abused. I think Rights of the Kingdom is what I would take, personally. Right, let's pick a fight with a squirrel. Yeah, like, like, and, and and like you kill the squirrel. No initiative was rolled, and also you're a druid. Your powers are gone for the day. Great job. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, eh. uh, I think it's just a way to make you feel like a better shaper. I love it. Um, Ray of the Kingdom. All beasts and creatures within the animal tag understand your speech. So you, you literally have the Disney Prince or Princess being able to talk to animals kind of feel. Um, you can understand their noises, their motions, as if they were speaking. Even if they do not speak a language, this ability doesn't grant beasts the intelligence to understand or communicate complex concepts, but you can share basic information with ease. Your GM has a final say on any particular creatures capable of expressing. Additionally, you have advantage on charisma checks made to interact and influence such creatures. This is a... This is just that moment where you're walking through a forest or a city. It, this also makes them viable in a city where you lean down and talk to a rat or you speak to a creature or you are you talk to a crow that repeats the thing or a parrot on a pirate ship that repeats what the captain says. That's the code to unlock a box. This is such a great idea. Uh, I don't know. Are you talking about the website road? Is that what you're talking about? If you're talking about that, I don't know. I would assume you'll see the animal tag in there. I don't know who did our... Yeah, I don't know who did our website thing. But hold on. Let me let me write this down. Um, new tags and search tags. And I'll ask on Thursday. Or I'll submit it to the team. Um, or, organized play. I can tell you someone asked about that last week. That's probably a good thing to... I'll pause here on that. 
Uh, organized play, down below you'll see there's a community button. I'll be adding a link to that as soon as the website is up. There's already community play going on in our Discord. We have GMs with paid slots through, what is it? Something plays, I can't remember. But they are running stuff right now and eventually they'll be running Tales of the Valiant, which is pretty cool. So there are things like that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you see an overhaul on it. I just personally don't know. Start playing games. Thank you, Myth. Thank you. My brain was fried. I also, let me scroll up here. Someone asked, uh, does this go further than 10th level eventually long term? Of course. I don't know. I haven't seen anything past uh, level 10, to be honest with you. I saw these early in July and at the beginning of end of end of June. I saw these two as they were building out the 10 levels. I have no idea what 11 to 20 is. I I, I have zero clue in on that. I would assume if if the surveys went well for this, I assume that if the um, if the alpha goes well and people love what's there, I think they'll just keep building on it. That's my personal belief. Maybe a 20th level heroic boon, something along those lines, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. I hope so. Yeah, that's what I would think too. That's, that's what I would, I would hope so. So, anyway. That's the right of the druid. Um, uh, and the rights of the king, right of the shaper, right of the kingdom. Love it. Druid subclasses, circle the shifter, you're a better shifter, you have potent forms, you have quick shift, and you have beast fury that comes out of this, which is super fun. Uh, Druid level 3 through 9, they talk about this max CR goes up, so if you want to be more of a, a shifter, you take this, and now instead of that quarter CR, everything bumps up to a better CR for you, giving you more options. Ninth level, I would like to point out this baby here after the argument for the movie, Owlbear. We were listening. I'm just saying. <laughs> we were listening to you. <laughs> uh, I love that that's in here. Um, quick shift is pretty cool. Uh, quick shift, whenever you wild shape beast form, you can transform as a bonus action instead of an action. Super cool. Yeah, right? Flag baby, yes. I love quick shift. I think this is great. That's like in mid conversation. That means you could even like attack shift fly away like whatever it is you need to steal something from somebody bonus action shift bounce out this gives you more flexibility on the way we're playing with bonus actions for classes to make you feel like you can do more in a round i dig this beast fury pretty cool when you take an action on your turn while beast form you can use your bonus action to take a single unarmed attack with your claws hooves fangs or whatever your natural weapon is this tax a d6 plus your proficiency bonus and damage is considered proficient in it your attack, uh, if you decide the attack deals bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage when you first assume your form, pretty cool. And then the next one is more of your, your caster style, your, your green song, your circle of the leaf. And this is more about the trees, the plants, the flowers. Uh, so think of flora and fauna. It's kind of how I would explain these two pieces. I dig the concept behind this. Um, you get a wild shape for a grove, which is cool. I don't know if anyone looked at this. You gain a new way to use your wild shape. So the other one makes you better at beast shaping. This one is an action. You can expend the use of your wild shape feature to infuse the area around you with primordial power, shaping it to a magical pocket grove. This is... There's no park in a city and no one has seen wildlife in so long. You can just... And make a small park for everybody kind of cool when you use this feature uh vitality surges in the ground in a 10 foot radius centered on you normal plants in the unaffected area rapidly expand magical plants sprout from the ground sacred grove remains magical for one minute until you uh, sacrifice it causing it to wither or until you fall unconscious after the magic fades any non-magical plants remain healthy and overgrown so you could like fix some crops in area to help people restart something with it kind of a cool concept you can make a tree line, you can make tangleweed, and you can make wildflowers for things that you can do with these. And the wildflowers are cool. When you do so, all creatures of your choice uh, on solid ground while in the grove gain temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. So while you're fighting in the grove, everyone gets bonus. You get take root, harder for you to be knocked prone uh, as you kind of root yourself into the ground. This is just a great, like, druidy, druidy feel. I, 
I don't know. I'm excited to see what other circles are out of this. Yeah, I, I don't think anything's in there yet, Road. I don't think we'll probably see any changes there until TOV releases. That's my guess. That's my guess. But in the alpha, the alpha does have the tags in them. And I think if I remember correct, you know what? I have it open. I have it open. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go to monsters. Let's go to monsters here. Uh, tags. I'm curious for you and me. So you got your types here. Uh, tags. Animal. A creature that is, is not of the beast type, but shares enough characteristics with beasts that it can be affected by spells, features, abilities that specifically tar target beasts, such as speak with animal. So I'm pretty sure you'll see the tag mentality go on because it's a pretty big part of, of the game. Yeah. Oh, mm, the monsters are so good. I hope they bring back monsters with specific dooms. If not, I'm going to make a PDF with dooms based on monster type and tag type that you can add to the monsters to change up what you fight. I love it. I, I love Doom. I think it gives GM a little bit more agency over fun stuff in the game. It lets new players have an idea of how to make monsters feel unique. Anyway, I'm, I, I, will, I will stop. So now we go into the Ranger. Ranger is one of my favorite classes of all time. Um, I feel like they've been done a disservice for so long. I love being able to be ranged in melee, weave in and out of combat, shoot if needed, track people down. Um, I was a big fan of the Waylander series, if you know what that is. He's one of the best trackers. I love those books. Obviously, I grew up on R.A. Salvatore's work. And then everyone loved Lord of the Rings. Uh, there's just so many things you can do with a really good tracker, with sense of smell, following people. Even Batman, technically, in fantasy would be some form of ranger or investigator. I love what we did with this. So, good hit points. You can be in combat. You're not going to get rolled right away. Um, and we have a bunch of features here, but we'll go through it on the block first. Explore, Mystic Mark, Martial Action, Spell Casting. Thank you for bringing Spell Casting back to the Rangers. It's the thing that kind of differentiated them, in my eyes, from being just a martial class. Uh, obviously, Ranger Calling. That's your archetype at third. Improvement, Multi-Attack making you good, empowered mark, calling feature, improvement, stalker step, heroic boon. Pretty good. Um, explorer is really cool. You have the ability to deal with environmental challenges. is unmatched. You're super good at doing this. Your speed is not half when you move through non-magical difficult terrain. You know how to move through this stuff. That and Here's the thing that makes me happy. Non-magical difficult terrain. It doesn't say... It has to be wilderness, just in general. Chasing someone through an alley in a city with boxes and crates, you're able to handle that and chase someone down. You gain either a climb speed or a swim speed equal to your base walking speed. If you were to do this and take Grove, you could get both. Just as a heads up, everybody. That means you could have a climb and a swim and a walk and, and really feel like a ranger. Witcher it up, everybody. Witcher it up. And you have advantage on checks to track a creature. Boom. First level. Great at tracking. Awesome. Mystic Mark. You hit a creature with attack roll. You can mystically mark it as your favorite quarry. Bringing back that favorite enemy that we all know and love. Um, mark asks one minute until you use this feature to mark a different creature or until you're incapacitated. Most things have that tagline of dead, incapacitated, and so on. When a creature is marked, uh, including for the attack that triggered the mark, you deal an extra D4 damage for a minute. So... Your shooting does more, everything does more. Notice on here, all you gotta do is hit them with an attack roll. It does not say melee or ranged. So you could shoot somebody at a, a, a max range on a bow or a crossbow and they're marked. And just keep shooting them and get this extra D4 damage. You know what I'm saying? Kinda cool. Uh, bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing weapons damage each time you successfully hit with a weapon attack. You can use this uh, feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, so you can use it more than once. And then the die goes up. It goes from D4 to D6 to a D8 at 14th level, showing a little bit into the future, past 10th. Martial action, tactical expertise, allows you to quickly uh, attack quickly on the battlefield. I love this. Bonus action on each of your turns. You can use it to perform a weapon option. If you have not looked at 
alpha yet? Uh-huh. Yeah, exact. Did you notice that things that are being used the most in classes is spells for TOV? We have basically said, how about you just have that? Like detect magic for wizards with their magic site. Like the things that like, oh, I guess I'll waste the spell slot having this. We're just saying, nah, just, just have it. There was dead levels. How about we just give you these as your dead levels? I love it. I think it's I think it's fantastic that they did that. Yeah. Uh, martial action. So anyway, you get to pick weapon options. If you've not seen that weapon options in in uh, alpha, it's things like pinning shot, ricochet shot, just fun stuff like that. Really cool. And then you can choose one of the following unique martial actions that you know. Aiming, pretty cool. You get an aim action, a quick strike action if you're doing two weapons. And then spell casting, you get spell casting at second level, which is awesome. Spells known, first ring and higher, spell casting ability score, and then tracking. This is huge. Tracking is big in a game, and it's a really fun way to be able to do storytelling with your players and them talking about how they track. There's no reason not to just, I love giving them narrative control, passing the camera to my players once in a while. And tracking is one of those moments where I love People who are playing rangers that are like studied and they, they're like, it could be as simple as like, oh, I found footprints or someone else is like, I noticed that piece of thread stuck in the door jam or out in the wilderness. It might be these areas are broke at a higher level than any creature in this area be able to hit. They went this way. Those moments of tracking are fun storytelling that you can let your players do. I, I love that we kind of gave a little sidebar for this. And then we get into our subclasses, obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. You also have improvement, martial talent, or technical talent. Technical talents are some of my favorite things. Multi-attack, empowered mark. Your mark gets better. It's within 60 foot of you, which is pretty cool. Um, when it's when something is marked within 60 foot, you know exact location. Exact. Love this. I can see this being really cool with ricoch ricochet shot. Being able to bounce it off of things and hit them around corners and stuff. I think this would be awesome. Um... This also, they don't get an advantage on attacks against you when they're invisible. It gives you those Witcher moments. Stalker step. Dim light, darkness, lightly obscured, mist, fog, natural phenomenon. You can use a bonus action to magically become invisible at ninth level. Batman? Am I wrong? Feels like Batman to me. I'm just saying. And then heroic boon. So, this is the commitment to the ranger. Path of the Predator is dope. When you roll initiative, you can spend a use of magical uh, mystic mark to automatically mark one creature you can see. No attack required. Additionally, if you mark the creature uh, is reduced to zero HP, you can use your reaction to transfer the mark to a different creature you can see within 60 foot of your original target. I thought about how awesome this would be is if you were... Um, with like a low level NPC or someone that you needed to get somewhere, you could mark them to make sure they're safe during combat. And you'll know their hit points and what they're at. Cause it doesn't say it has to be an enemy and there's no save. So this allows you to keep an eye on someone on your party. If that is a concern, like you need to deliver someone somewhere. If you're, if Let's just talk castles and crown. If you got a prince or a princess with you, you need to get somewhere. You can mark them to make sure they're good. And as long as they're within 60 foot of you, it doesn't matter. If they're in a room talking to somebody else, something bad happens, you know. I think this is a kind of a cool way to use this ability outside the box. Uh, Path of the Sage. This is more the spellcaster style where you learn more cantrips from the primordial spell list. You learn two rituals, which is awesome if you want to have a little more of the castery witcher feel to you, or you want to have more of a, a spell casting ranger in general, which is pretty cool. And our two subclasses are hunter, which I think you get this. You get hunter spells, killer instinct, relentless pursuit, and iron mind. Here, look at these spells, by the way. Protection from evil and good, pass without trace, non-detection, locate creature, hold monster at 17. Giving you a little glimpse into the future again. I love this. Killer Instinct's great. You know there are immunities. Super cool. Relentless Pursuit. 
When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, it takes an extra D8 of damage. If it's below its max HP, Iron Mine keeps you focused. Hard to be, you know, supernaturally impacted. And then if you want to be a animal companion ranger, instead of it being baked in, you take the choice of doing that and you become a pack master. And you get B Spirit, Lifelink, Pack Master spells, and Shared Mark, which is awesome. And you get to, to have some animal friendship, Wild Sense, uh, Conjure Animals for those three levels, uh, third, fifth, and ninth level for casting. And you get a B Spirit. There's a really different way to handle this. If anyone hasn't read through this, I highly recommend like reading all the details on this. It's It's pretty awesome. But basically, you have a beast spirit, and you bind it to physical form to fight alongside you. Could be. Maybe it's your reincarnated significant other, a sibling, a family member, a father figure, someone from a tribe. Maybe it's someone you found in the forest that saved you, that's a spirit that is guiding you. There's so many things you can do with this. Be It's a bee spirit. It stings you, and you're forever tied to get... No, beast beast spirit and then this gives you the general rundown for what the stats are the different forms right which is cool um and then the attacks that it gets life link could be parry the platypus with different equipment sure yeah you're right it could be parry the platypus with different equipment yo platypus you don't mess with those is it platypi is there a plural for platypus? Anyway, it already sounds plural. I think it would just be the word. Um, you think I would know, but I, I do not. Life link, which is pretty fun. Um, within 30 foot of you, you can use your reaction to take any amount of damage they took instead. Platypi, I thought so. And then shared mark. Now you share the mark when you're doing stuff, which is cool if you're dual attacking. There are supp uh, supplemental ranger spell class spells which are cool. These spells are options for Ranger subclasses, but are not included within the Primordial spell list, so we included them here for playtesting, which is awesome. And then we get into Primordial spells. I'm not going to go through all these. I know I'm just not. There's just too many. But I love the different classifications of Divine, Arcane, Primordial. We've seen other games do this. I've enjoyed it when they have. I love that they're bringing it to Tales of the Valiant and to the Black Flag role-playing. This is... This is a great spell list. And you have to think with Deep Magic 1 and 2 also releasing, there's going to be so many spells for you to pick from. It's going to be kind of kind of wild. Is there any specific spell out of the list on screen right now that anyone would like to see? Is there any spell that you are interested in that maybe you don't uh you didn't pick up this yet you weren't a backer you're here and want to see something is there a spell on the list that interests you because I'll, I'll be happy to look at like one or two spells here before we close out and then i have a couple of little things to talk about as well as we close out is there anything anything you would like to do or see contagion is that on here it's contagion on the spell list yeah it is we'll do contagion I love Project Black. Uh, Deep Magic 1 and 2 is so good. All right, let's look at Contagion. I'm not opposed. Contagion. Here we go. Here is Contagion in all of its glory. One action, touch, seven days. Uh, let's see here. Your touch inflicts disease. I do love that we're adding the nice little descriptors to everything throughout here. I think these are great. Uh, we did that for all of our monsters, too, to be in the Black Flag role-playing. Make a melee spell attack against a creature within your reach. On hit, you afflict... Oh, wait, afflict? Afflict, okay. You afflict the creature with the disease of your choice from the options below. At the end of each of the target's turn, it must make a con save. After failing three of these saves, the disease effects last for the duration, which is seven days. Oh, that's... That's rough. And the creature stops making these saves. After succeeding on three of these saves, the creature recovers from the disease and the spell ends. One week of being sick. Nothing like handing out the COVID. 
Uh, since the spell <laughs> induces a natural disease uh, in its target, any effect that removes disease or otherwise um, elaborates a disease effect applies to it. So you can get rid of it. Blinding sickness, filth fever, flesh rot, one of my favorites, mind fire, seizure, oh, slimy doom. What in the actual... Okay, so this one makes you blind, and wisdom checks are needed. Oh, they're all different stat effects, everybody. So this one is wisdom. This one is strength. Flesh rot is charisma because you get ugly. You get ugly. Right? And then mind fire is int. And then seizures dexterity... And then Slimy Doom, which is the one I'm interested in. The creature begins to bleed uncontrollably. The creature has dis the creature has disadvantage on con checks and con saves. In addition, whenever the creature takes damage, it is stunned until the end of its turn. You get to target your weak spot. And that one Ranger, you know your target's weaknesses. And the one Ranger ability. If you're the Hunter, I think it was. You, can, you know their weaknesses, I think is what it was. This could be a great combo. Great combo. Um, this is something to call out here. Weird but true. You might notice a few spells are labeled with the weird circle of magic. This is a bit of foreshadowing because we haven't revealed the weird circle yet. Also, the editor left these in the playtest packet so he didn't have to remember to reinsert them later. Fuglify? <laughs> I'm screenshotting that. I'm not offended. That is amazing. Uh, I will I will 100% be sending that to <laughs> the team. <laughs> oh, oh, so good. So good. Thank you. Um, so we have all these lovely new spells that are in here, and that weird is obviously looking into the future for something that's going on. I love the Fine Steed spell. Um, Fly is back, obviously still 60 foot. Uh, what else did I want to see? Goodberry, a classic is in here. There's just so much stuff in here. As I scroll through them all, I want to get to the rituals. So here's our rituals. Awaken. Classic. Classic. Is Goodberry a cantrip? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's a first level spell. Let me go back up. Good question. EFG. Uh, no. First level. Getting rid of that problem. Yeah, it's first level. It's not a cantrip. Not a cantrip. It would be too broken if it was a cantrip, man. I, I think it would be. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's first level. Uh, so, Rituals. Uh, Awaken is cool. One of my favorite spells of all time for beasts or plants to give them sentience. I love that concept. Uh, we had an evil druid that was going through and making all the trees in the area and awakening all the trees in a game that I ran so that the people who were in there trapping in... Um, uh, over over hunting in the area we're getting murdered by trans which is great um purify food and drink reincarnate some fun ones song of the forest this is cool great fourth ring primordial ritual transmutation this is really cool tune your senses to the nature world allowing you to perceive near in audible sounds you tune your senses to the natural world so that you can detect every sound that occurs in the 60 foot you can clearly picture the source of each sound in your mind while the spell is active. You have Tremor Sense out to 10 foot, Keen Sense to 30, and you have advantage on Wisdom Perception checks that rely on hearing. Creatures that make no noise or are magically silent can't be detected by this spell. This is a great ritual. Yeah, good berries last 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, it still serves a purpose. So, I don't know. This is a great packet if you haven't picked this up yet. 
if, if you are a backer, you can go download it. If you haven't picked up the Alpha yet, I highly recommend it. This is a big book. 177 pages of just play test material for two months. This is a great piece if you haven't gotten it yet. If you did not back to Kickstarter, don't worry. You can still pick it up. Uh, it's $9.99. If you want to buy your own version of it now, you can. It is up, obviously, on our store, and it's also up on DriveThruRPG, wherever it is you store your library. But yeah, everyone, I'm a big fan of these two new classes. I think it's pretty awesome that we brought these two out as kind of an answer to the community. Uh, yeah, I can ask some questions. Will there be spells that can be cast as primordial or divine or arcane, or are they all mutually exclusive lists? I think you'll see some crossover. I'm pretty sure. I actually think there is some crossover already for a few of the spells, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't think they're going to be 100% exclusive, but there will be a lot of exclusive spells. And they've already talked about the weird, which is obviously going to be some type of spells. Yeah, some crossover is good. But you're going to see some very class-specific things. It's what makes classes classes, right? But... If you haven't play tested this, you're going to be at Gen Con. Try to get yourself into a game. I always tell people, pick up some generics, show up to a room, because you never know when people are going to drop out. If you do, if you do go to Gen Con, um, this Friday, I'm going to be doing a full marathon of Tales of the Valiant, Valiant Soil. This is the actual play that I ran. It's a four-part series of a horror-inspired um, piece that we built using Campaign Builder here on Cobalt Chats. We built it as a group. I took it and I ran it as a four-part adventure with our first four uh, Valiant uh, heroes that you can play. But if you show up to the convention and you did get a spot at the table, I think we have 120 table-ish, I think is what we're doing. Whatever you play at that Tales of the Valiant table, you get to walk away with the mini. And this Friday, I'm going to be painting minis while we are watching the uh, over eight hours of Tales of the Valiant for the Valiant Soil. I'm going to showcase one mini right now. Do you want to see the fighter, the rogue, or the cleric mini? What do you all want to see? I'm going to showcase one right now. You can see some pictures everywhere. The cleric? We got one for cleric, one for fighter. The cleric, two for cleric. Three for Cleric, four for Cleric. All right. So if you have not seen the Cleric, I had a blast making the first four Valiant. And the second two Valiant are made by one of the design team for the Ranger and the Druid. Um, I got to make these. Sino is one of my favorites as well. Uh, and this new camera I got is super spicy. So let me, let me turn on the autofocus. Oh, it's already on for me. Thank you, autofocus. You're the best. Uh, let me turn this off, the tracking off here. Zoom myself all the way out. Woo! So this is, let me move this. You should be able to see you're pretty good on this cam. So this is, oh, I don't even have to do that. This is Sino. This is from Eldridge Foundry. This is the, they're already put together. You do not, you do not need to build them. They are built. I mean, I can make it really focused. I just put my hand behind it. You can see it pretty well. She is awesome looking. I'll be painting these on cam. Uh, and I'm going to be painting them in the style of the artwork. I used to do competition painting. So I get to bust out my brushes. It's been a long time. I get to kind of have a fun work day and paint miniatures on stream with all of you. So I'll be painting those live on Friday. Currently, I think the stream is aiming to start at noon. It's going to be a long one. It's going to be like eight to nine hours of streaming goodness. Uh, while I'm here, I will be here all day. I will be answering questions. Uh, I'll be streaming this into the Tales of the Valiant chat, uh, or the Tales of the Valiant overlays, showing off the overlays this Friday. This Friday, Wilson. I'm going to prime these on Thursday, let them dry overnight. I'm going to do some Zenithal priming so they're ready to go. And then I'm also going to show off our two Deep Magic minis as well if you missed um there was a group that already did a painting for them but i'm going to show them i don't think i'll have time to paint them that day we'll see but i'll be showing them off and then um in between breaks while things are drying and all that kind of stuff i'll probably be looking through uh the prepared book if you have not seen the prepared book where are you at prepared book hmm 
Hmm. Did I put it away? Oh, here it is. I will probably be flipping through this while things dry. The Prepared. And this is a collection of adventures that came out hardback from our Prepared series. Expanded collection of one-shot adventures. This is killer if you're looking for some fun stuff to run for your players at home. Really pick up and play. Most of the adventures in here, if I remember correctly, are like one to two pages with, with full maps. Because we brought Dib back, right? Um, if I flip through them, I mean, you can see like Dib's Wagon of Doom. Nice little spreads if you're looking for some fun stuff to run. So Friday, I'll be doing that probably 12 p.m. CST, uh, 1 p.m. EST till around 8, 9 o'clock at night, man. We're going to be streaming all of it. So I'll be here answering questions, talking to people. It's going to be my last time on air before Gen Con, and then I'll be recording some stuff live at Gen Con, and then uh, we'll see what uh, I have to bring after Gen Con when we get back. I'll probably take a couple days off. I don't know if I'll be back on that Wednesday right away because, uh, you know, con, crud, travel, everything else. <laughs> so we may take that Wednesday off. We'll see what happens. Or maybe I'll just replay something else in here. If you are curious as to how Tales of the Valiant plays, I recommend going over to our YouTube channel. I'll put the link in chat right now. Um, I've done a live play where the audience got to roll and play as our Cobalt Wizard and as our Swolebald Fighter. And then also all the Tales of the Valiant, uh, Valiant Soil playlists over there in case you can't make it Friday. So if you kind of want to see how the game is played, how me as a GM interpret some of this stuff for fun, check those out. I highly recommend them. So click over there, give us a follow. Um, I will be back this Friday here on Twitch. And uh, yeah, everybody, have a great day. I hope you like the Ranger and Druid. I hope you like what you're seeing for Tales of the Valiant. And I am so happy that I can now go back to saying thank you for raising a flag with Black Flag Role Playing. And I will see you all Friday for a long session and a little bit of painting. Have a great day, everybody.